Hey, this is Skipen. I'm back with another illustration breakdown. Right now you're seeing a time lapse from an app called Art Studio Pro. It's available on iOS as well as Mac OS. It's a pretty feature rich app and I do like it. I'm gonna be reviewing it soon, so please get subscribed to see that. This time I'm drawing in more of an anime style and I really wanna be thorough with my app reviews. So I'm testing out different brushes and seeing what kind of features are available on Art Studio Pro. One of the first things you'll see is that there is a time-lapse recording feature available, which is great. You're seeing this on more and more apps, and the one on Art Studio Pro is pretty good, but the quality isn't the best on the full HD setting. At 4K, it's great, it's uh, crisp, very good for YouTube and just preserving your drawing process, but for whatever reason, the full HD is not quite full HD. So. For the majority of this video, you're going to be seeing it a little bit more pixelated, and I'm going to have a little section of that in the review as well. I've also been trying to be more accurate with my anatomy, really sketching things out, putting a skeleton or some sort of shape to it before I get into the more small details. And I also wanted to try to diverge from the type of stuff I've been doing lately. This is a little bit more of a fantasy piece, whereas I think a lot of the stuff I've done for the past year or two has been something that you could find just on the street in real life. I used to really love fantasy and sci-fi and other kinds of genres and want to go back into that. I think uh, when you draw something that's realistic, it's a lot more difficult because everyone has a reference for it. We all know what certain things look like in real life and so you have to be even that more accurate. Whereas when you have something in fantasy, you have a lot more room to play around with and it's just uh, a little bit easier on the artist to not have to be so accurate. And I also want to try to be more dynamic and also kind of maybe tell a story with these illustrations. As you'll see, I went from something that was more standard to now the character has flowing hair, the skirt is flowing, the cape is flowing, and then there's something going on with the wand. So it'd be nice to be able to tell a little bit of a story through illustrations as well. I do have to say that the sketching process in Art Studio Pro is great. They have a lot of different brushes for sketching pencils and other kinds of uh, like Photoshop style brushes, so sketching was no problem for me. The inking process, however, was a little bit different. They had one brush, the taper brush I believe it's called, that was nice, but it's not exactly what I wanted and I couldn't quite make the types of brushes I like for uh, inking as well as coloring. So that's one little knock against RCO Pro, I suppose, is that from the start, what's included with the software is a good base, but for me, it was missing some of those essential tools. And on top of that, I just couldn't quite get the uh, brushes to feel the way I wanted, even creating one from scratch. The brush engine is actually very complex, and creating a brush has a lot of different options. I just couldn't quite find the right combination of stuff that I wanted for my style of painting. Whenever I tried to do an app review, I really want to be thorough, so I did try to draw this line work and this coloring and even the sketch inside my house or office as well as outside, of course trying to be as safe as I can be. And I don't know if it's the unfamiliar tools or the unfamiliar software or maybe just an uncomfortable place to draw, I don't feel like the line work is my strongest. And I do think that whenever you're trying to draw something to either test out a software or review something, you're not at your full capacity, you're not putting out the best work possible. But that being said, I still think it's a successful piece for the purposes of reviewing Art Studio Pro and making videos like this. So now we're on to the coloring process. Another issue I had with Art Studio Pro was that I wasn't able to clip a layer folder to a base layer. So what I like to do for coloring is create a base layer, which is just the colored outline of my piece, basically. As you saw, it was like an orange, uh, just the base layer. And what I do is I'd create a layer folder and clip that layer folder to the orange base layer. And it just lets things be really organized and uh, you have a lot of control over kind of each individual section of the drawing that you want to color. Unfortunately, Art Studio Pro doesn't allow you to do that. You can clip layers to other layers, but you can't clip layer folders to layers. It's not a deal breaker necessarily, but it is something that then slows me down because then you have to go in and color each individual uh, section and it just it's more time consuming, especially on an app that you're not familiar with. So it takes probably double as long as it would for me to color or even get started coloring as it would on Clip Studio Paint. That being said, I do think that Art Studio Pro has a robust layer system, lots of different effects and blending modes, and the brush engine is also very good. Art Studio Pro has 
a few different options for coloring. You have your standard brushes, but you also have wet brushes, and the wet brushes are what I was using. I specifically use the digital round brush that can be found in the wet brushes section. It feels a lot like some sort of standard um, Photoshop round brush that has a little taper on the beginning and end. Or also on Clip Studio Paint, you have your kind of watercolor style brushes. Very similar to that great brush for coloring anime style drawing. So you do have that available to you. I also did use the smudge tool quite a bit. Uh, smudge tools are something that I've been using a lot in Clip Studio and other places. It's very nice to just put down some colors and be able to smudge that around, create something that's a little bit softer, not as harsh, and then go in there and maybe with that digital round brush, add some more details. And you can see right now, I'm really trying to get a 3D look by adding layer effects, stuff like screen or color dodge, adds a lot to your illustration. And as I go through the coloring process, I am trying to at least follow some sort of lighting situation. I thought that I would have some fire coming out of the wand, so I wanted to at least have the light be closer to the wand and fall off as you get to the edge of the frame at the bottom right corner. Another part of the illustration that I really like to use uh, layer folder clipping is with the hair. I have a few different tutorials on how I draw hair, but it comes in really handy when I'm trying to uh, stack lots of different layers to make a complex coloring process for the hair. So it's not impossible as you can see, I'm just drawing in the same style I usually do, but it takes a little bit more thinking, it takes a little bit more time, and you can't really go back and change things that easily. And talking about changing, I do like to go halfway through the drawing sometimes and change colors. Uh, I don't always have the idea in my head of this is going to be this color, so I just lay down colors in what I think would be appealing, and you can go back later with uh, different blending modes or just kind of changing the uh, tones of things to really adjust it to the way that you want. So the original idea for this piece was to have uh, this character, a witch or a magician, and she is kind of more water themed, but accidentally cast a spell that's fire based and is kind of nervous about the whole thing. So that's what I was trying to find there with all those colors, trying to find whatever matched best to convey that. And then a good thing once I decided to go with a mostly blue color scheme, you can really add some contrasting elements, something completely different with the ribbon and the eye color. So it does help make that stand out and also adding kind of like a hair dye or different variation gra gradient to the hair at the bottom with that kind of teal look. The fire was a lot of fun to draw, and I was a little bit uh, unsure about the background. I wasn't sure if I was going to add a background or not, but ended up going through with it. It's not my favorite. Again, I can chalk it up to just new software being unfamiliar, but I think at least it does uh, add to my experience and gives me more insight into Art Studio Pro as a drawing software. So that's about it. We're done with this illustration. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. I'm always available to answer questions about iPad, drawing process, Art Studio Pro, and I will be having that review out hopefully within the next few weeks, so get subscribed to see that. I'm Skippin, and thank you so much for watching.